Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. Here we are in the docking number four as we spin around the ship. Yes, this time I've rendered it out as a preview. I've actually rendered it out, so yeah, there's not going to be any communication or lack of sync problems in this version, in this, uh, in this episode of our interplanetary fleet, where I basically work towards designing and creating a massive space station that will, that will dock many different modules to and take a whole, whole fleet, as it says, take a whole fleet to a different planet. This is just a refueler. Not particularly interesting, but there we go, getting close. Now the thing with the thing I found with docking is that you should give yourself a fair amount of time beforehand. Because even though I've got such a close intersect right there, don't be fooled, I'm not gonna be going fast enough. Sure I'm gonna be at the right altitude and I can burn and try and catch up, but I'm not going anywhere near orbital speed for it right now. You can see that right there at the bottom there was a 900 meters per second difference between our speeds and that's quite evident in the rate it's catching us up so yeah be wary that you're not going to be able to encounter it on your suborbital uh, sub oh, what's it called? You're not going to be able to be next to it, you're not going to be able to encounter it on your suborbital hop before actually managing to circularize so, whilst doing this, we actually do need to point upwards. Highly inefficient, of course, burning, wasting the fuel trying to keep us pointing upwards. But um, it does provide us with some opportunity to get into a lower altitude, so we do at least have a perfect footstep on which to catch it up. There we go. Now we can just warp around doing our cat and mouse. Doesn't take too long. And um, so here's what this video is going to be, because as you probably saw, it's not very long. What we're going to do is we are going to first refuel, that's the priority, and that's why we're flying this ship right now. And um, in order to do that, we're actually going to have to deorbit the empty uh, fueling station that's up there at the moment. Which is nice. Um, I probably shouldn't have deorbited it, it might have been nice just to leave it there, maybe for, I don't know, RCS... Uh, as a fuel, a store of RCS because it does have quite a lot of RCS fuel still in there. But um, whatever the case, we're going to deorbit this refuel that's attached to the ship at the moment. And then once they, once the crew that piloting that are safely on the ground, we can hop into our th uh, third engine, dock that, and then we shall practice actually transferring using an engine. Because, of course yet we haven't actually done that in the video at least i have done it because i've already recorded the video <laughs> oh god um but yes this will be the first time we've actually uh sent this design to another planet and we shall encounter some problems which we're going to fix or will we i guess you shall find out if you continue watching so just moving out that old empty tank it's not entirely empty, it still has something, what, 400 litres of fuel in it? I don't know, we'll see later. But yeah, now we can take its place as we watch it um, just drift away into the distance. Close the shield, of course, and coming in, setting as a target. I got, I don't know what it is with orbiting. The thing, the thing with being in orbit is that your perception of 3D space is warped. Quite literally, it's bent into a full circle. Because you imagine, okay, there's an object here, and there's my object here, and I need to move from A to B. But the thing is, whilst you're doing this, you're going around at thousands of meters per second around a circular body. So everything you do, every time you change your inclination by burning normal or anti-normal, which is 180 degrees or... Is that uh, uh, right? Yeah, north or south. Every time you do that you are actually going to end up coming back towards it, not just going past it or away from it. Yeah, it's complicated. <sighs> but at any rate, I should stop trying to talk about things that I can't... I don't have the... Uh, <laughs> that I don't have the established vocabulary to actually be useful to anyone. That doesn't make sense, but I'm going to say it anyway. Yes. So, we are now in our craft. In our craft. And we are deorbiting. It's quite nice. I, I was going to land on the Kerbal Space Center, but yeah, oh well. And you can actually see on the map view, there's that uh, there's that 
crater in the middle of those circular kind of placed islands. I mentioned it in a video a while ago. I want to go there. And I'm going to go there very soon, maybe even tonight. That's uh, for me recording this, not for you watching this, I'm sure. There we go, 500 meters, open up the parachutes. No drogue deployment on these, they just instantly open, which is quite a useful feature. Very useful, in fact. That might have further applications in the future. Back to the space station, launching the Space Station Engine Mark 1. And this will be the last engine to be docked with the station. So, let's get it on! Blasting away from the launch pad. It doesn't take too long to get into orbit. I have almost refined how, you know, my, my docking kind of procedure. I've done it so many times, I think it's only natural that I should have refined it by now. And I would recommend using this launch system. It is pretty good. There are maybe some modifications you can make to it. Like I heard there was actually a bug. I'm not sure if it got fixed. But um, if you used one of the extremely small tanks directly above your lifting engine, then overheating never explodes your engine. So what I could do is add that on, which means A, we have more fuel, and B, I could run it at full thrust and not have to worry about it. Which is not something I've looked into, but it seems like a pretty good idea. Um, you know, exploit the game as much as you can, you know. Here we are, burning, trying to increase our orbital speed to desperately get up with uh, to try and catch up our space station there. Keeping the apoapsis low, there's no point getting it much higher now, seeing as we are going to have to be in a lower orbit in order to catch it up. I do like this. I do. I, do, I like this game. <laughs> I do like this game a lot. I don't know if you can tell by the way I upload loads of videos of it. If you guys want to play games with me other than this, because be it or not, I do not actually play entirely Kerbal Space Program, or even though I should do for the sake of you guys, I should just play this all the time. But um. If you are interested in possibly playing some games with me whenever I'm online, you can actually join my Steam group that I made for you playing games with me when I'm not playing Global Space Program. When I'm in this solar system, as I, what I think I called it, there is a link in the description to that, as there is on every video that I post now. Coming in closer, only 346 metres away. I paused there because someone interrupted me. This is the um, the benefit of doing post commentary. You can't get interrupted. Well, you can, but if you do get interrupted, you can just re-record. I guess you can do that anyway. Huh. And if I actually missed commentating that, I had this planned thing. I'd be like, hey, we're getting into us, we're getting into uh, Yeah, because of that, just then, you saw. I actually used the engine to get in as close as possible, and we went spinning, like flying towards the space station at startlingly high speeds, which was slightly mildly worrying. Um, but oh well, we're coming in for our docking now. Beautiful, these ships do go together pretty well. As I think I've mentioned a few times, what I would love to see in the game now, and they were even talking about it. They were the devs on the live stream, the official Kerbalcon live stream that was a while ago. They were talking about how they there's no reason why the VAB can't be uh, um, employed anywhere, why it can't be loaded up at any point in space. What I would like is to be able to put, put struts in the different places during the flight, so you can you see there's a wobble there. I would love to be able just to put struts in between the ships so they don't wobble. It'll make Everything's so much more feasible. But anyway, here we are, and we have a pretty big ship, don't we? Pretty rib ridiculously big. Let's quick save and then warp until the moon rises. Because, yes, we are going to burn for the moon. That's our first test. We are going to transit to the moon. Make sure the opposite engine is off, because if it isn't, then, you know, we're going to have problems. And I'm actually using the flight planning, because it's quite useful for being able to watch the ship whilst burning. So, let's burn. That's quite a lot of wobble. That's a dangerous amount of wobble, actually. What am I going to do about that? There's a few things we can do. Like, for one thing, turning off gimbal. Ah, that helped, didn't it? Yes! This is the way to go, ladies and gentlemen. I've realised, if you turn off gimbal, it really does help a rid 
ridiculous amount. And there we go, even the solar panels there. Although I think I'm not going to be using those solar panels because they do overlap with the tanks. They actually clip inside them, which I don't like. Don't like that at all. But yeah, we, we have a working system to transfer to a different body. We have it, and it works, and it's amazing. Now we need to see how effective it is at actually putting us back into an orbit. So, you, once again, using flight planning, we can quickly set that up. One reason I don't like flight planning is the lack of accuracy. You can't perfectly circularize, but that's a maneuver that you can actually do just by yourself. It's pretty easy. Just get to your periapsis or apoapsis and then burn prograde or retrograde, depending on where you want to circularize. Isn't that a nice thumbnail? Yes, it is indeed. The lack of wobble here is actually remarkable, and it is great. I think after this, after doing this mission, how feasible it really is to do this maneuver has become so apparent. Pointing normal, because we have our space station set up here, we will actually not keep this here, because obviously we want to carry on building, but um, as a test, this was definitely successful, and now we know how we're going to continue. So guys, if you liked the video, then please do like the video. Thanks for watching, and I guess I will see you all next time. Isn't that beautiful? It really is. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> so much.